Over these next few videos, we're going to look at four different types of acid-base reactions. The first one that we're going to look at is when a strong acid reacts with a strong base. These are reactions that you guys are the most familiar with when you did titrations as a sophomore. Those were the, the uh, reactions that we did the most. The strong acid, weak base, weak acid, strong base ones are not quite as easy, hence the flat face there. And then weak acids and weak bases, when you put the two of them together, they're probably the hardest type out of the four. The good news is that you wouldn't really be expected to do too much math with a weak acid, weak base reaction. Um, it's more conceptual and so even though it's the hardest kind, you'd see the fewest questions about those uh, on the AP exam. The strong acid weak base or weak acid strong base, they're a little bit more challenging. So you'd probably see something that looks more like those on the AP exam. Probably the strong acid strong base would be a little bit too much on the easy side. But it helps to start with that as a reference point since it's something that you guys are familiar with and see how those easy ones really truly work at an AP level. And then we'll kind of graduate to some of those strong acid weak base or weak acid strong base reactions. Our focus for the next little bit here is going to be reactions that happen at the equivalence point. Our focus right now will be reactions in which uh, we're at a point in the titration where the mole ratio of acid and base that have reacted match the stoichiometry of the reaction. So if your balanced chemical equation has a one-to-one -one ratio between your acid and your base, and if you look at how many moles of acid and moles of base that have reacted at that point, if they also are in a one-to-one -one ratio, we would say, yes, we are at the equivalence point. So because of this, sometimes you might see some uh, examples, textbook problems, something like that. Sometimes they call the equivalence point the stoichiometric point, since you're matching that stoichiometry. Now for most problems about titrations, the base is the titrant, it's the chemical that's inside the burette, and the acid is in the flask. Uh, be careful with the wording in problems, that's not always the case, but that's usually the case. And that is usually how you guys have titrated too, where you put that acid in the Erlenmeyer flask down below, put some phenolphthalein in there, and then you add base just enough for it to turn that light pink, um, where you know that you've gone just past that equivalence point. That uh, phenolphthalein turns pink in a base. And so the reason we're always going for that faint pink in a titration is because we know that we've gone just past the equivalence point that we're starting to get there where our base is the excess reactant. We're starting to get a buildup of base and that's why you get that pink color. So Let's say that we added 25 milliliters of two molar hydrochloric acid with 50 milliliters worth of one molar sodium hydroxide. We're going to do the math to prove that we've hit the equivalence point, that stoichiometric point. So if we want to write a complete or a net ionic equation, you want to keep in mind that hydrochloric acid uh, can react with water and it, it, the water basically dissociates that hydrochloric acid and turns it into H3O plus ions and chloride ions. And since that HCl is a strong acid, it's a right word pointing arrow only. When we write hydrochloric acid in complete and net ionic equations, we're not going to write it as HCl. We're going to write it as that H3O plus ion instead. What about the chloride? Well, the chloride in our reaction is going to be a spectator. Uh, when we, if I go back there at the bottom of that pre of this slide here, if we write just a balanced chemical equation where you have HCl and sodium hydroxide reacting, we make water and NaCl, right? Well, 
really, if we're doing a complete and a net ionic equation, the chloride from your hydrochloric acid and the chloride from the salt that you'd be forming will be spectators, and so they get canceled out. Same thing with the sodium ions and the sodium hydroxide. That guy would be a spectator as well because it, in the sodium hydroxide completely ionizes and turns into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. It's a strong base. And then your salt that would form, sodium chloride, that guy completely dissociate. So your sodium ions are spectators too. So what that means, when we go to write our balanced equation, we're going to take that hydronium that came from our strongly dissociated hydrochloric acid and the hydroxide from our strongly dissociated sodium hydroxide and react those ions together. When you put those guys together, they would make two water molecules. So if we're trying to prove that we're at the equivalence point, and it told us that we're reacting 25 milliliters of that acid with 50 milliliters of the base, we have to convert milliliters to liters and then liters to moles using the molarity of the acid and the molarity of the base. When you look at how many moles of acid and base have reacted at this point in the reaction, since the moles of acid and base that have reacted are in a one-to-one -one ratio, right? You could reduce that 0 .050, 0 .050 ratio down to a one-to-one. -one. And then when you look up at the top there at the balanced equation, that's also a one-to-one. -one. So when the moles of acid and base that have reacted match, the mole ratio that's in that balanced chemical equation, that's how you know that you're at the equivalence point, the stoichiometric point.